So this is the uh, City Council work session meeting for November 15th, 2021. Um, present with us this evening are, is our staff is Director of Administration, Ali Palfu, City Clerk is Don Matsko, uh, Mike Baroni, our City Administrator, uh, Brian Grimm, our Finance Director, David Abel, Community Development Director, Paul Falls, our Chief of Police, I'm Lisa Whalen, I'm the Mayor, and three Council members present this evening are Pam Mortensen, John Chamberlain, and Ann McGregor, and Kathleen Rufkin is absent this evening. Uh, and just Gary Peters, who's hiding. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. <laughs> Gary, I didn't I see you. I didn't <laughs> see you. <laughs> I, I bet so not a lot, right a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary. Um, so just kind of for clarification, we have two things on the agenda. N normally, we would also have um, broadband discussion, but there really isn't a whole lot. And Allie is going to give us an update under council uh, staff reports at a regular meeting, just so you know. Um, with that, we will be discussing the city administrator interim period and then the sewer fund budget discussion. So I'll hand it over to... Uh, Not me. Uh, okay. I can take Allie. it. Yeah. Um, so there are approximately seven weeks in between Mike's last day and when the new city administrator is scheduled to start. Um, and we discussed last meeting briefly about the interim period, so we thought we'd bring it to a work session to make a, a final decision on that. So staff is recommending discussing two options. Um, staff, management staff as a whole work together to cover the duties and operate in the interim period, or the council can also appoint an existing management member um, as the interim city administrator until the new city administrator is on board. Uh, we do believe these are the two viable options for the council to consider, and there may be financial impacts if you choose option two. So with that, you guys can discuss. Questions? Well, um, I talked to Mike this morning, and um, I, I like what Mike had to say, but I'm, I'm going to ask my question again. Sure. Yeah. If there isn't somebody who's actually heading Oh, the whole staff then. Then in a crisis, what happens? And my answer to Anne this morning was, it depends on the crisis. Um, if it was, let's say, a police matter, <clears throat> I would think Chief Falls would probably be taking the lead on something like that, as he always does anyway, as he does now. Um, if it's like a natural disaster or some sort, and there has to be like a public works Related because we're clearing trees and whatever, I think Gary would be the person. Or if there's some massive snowfall, that you got to figure out what to do. Um, I'm not sure if there's a financial crisis ever, but there could be. But or community development the crisis, depression. the Great Depression. <laughs> <laughs> that one we might see coming, but versus a natural disaster, but you know, or an HR crisis, I think the David Bryan and Allie would be just fine working together on it. They, they already do. I mean, the last two weeks, that's all we did. I wasn't here. Uh, I think I spoke to Allie on the phone once and the mayor when we had a personnel committee meeting to discuss the uh, labor negotiations that are happening tomorrow with the community service officers. But other than that, <laughs> these guys didn't need me to operate. I, I hate to even say that because maybe you don't want, you want to hire a city administrator, but uh, that's the case. I mean, these, these people are very veteran in their roles here. They understand the jobs quite well. I try to stay out of their way. And I think your next administrator would be wise to do that because they're very good at what they do. So, but again, as I mentioned to you on the phone, and uh, it's up to you guys how you want to handle it. I'd be fine either way. I think our staff would be fine either way, but. So I had a similar question, not quite crisis like that, but that's a good one. Um, I said, well, who's gonna handle the um, emails or even phone calls. So somehow um, somebody, it, it, maybe it'll be Allie or somebody will have to field those emails. So his email will still be valid. So any emails that come in, somebody would have to check them, right? right. Yep. And then... We did that one with uh, Clerk Lindquist. Oh, okay. Well, when she was... And when with Cassandra. And left. then you would field them. So, for instance, yeah. if it's a public works question, you would field it over to Gary, mm -hmm. same planning, um, right. whatever. But if it's a crisis, so um, Paul is our emergency management director, and so he would 
he would take charge of that, but then he would be working with Gary if it's, you know, a tornado or, or snow, whatever it is. So they would be working in conjunction. And if it's an emergency like that, then we would also declare an emergency. I would have to declare that, and that's good for three days, and then, and then the council would have to meet and we'd have to decide what we're going to do. But I would think, and Paul is well-trained. Now, the only question I would have, Paul, is, okay, Paul is leaving on the 3rd or, or before January. Uh, January, and so then he wouldn't be here. Now, then I'm assuming Craig would be the emergency management director? Yes, so essentially, uh, Mayor and Council, Craig will be me when I'm gone. Okay, and is he as well trained and versed and everything in this as, as you are? Okay, you have to say no to that, right? <laughs> Probably not. Craig is a very experienced police officer. Okay. Um, I have no doubts in my mind that he can handle the operations of the department. Okay. Uh, when it comes to emergency management, I think he he knows enough to get through things, and he knows the right people that could assist with that. So I, I don't have any worries, or I wouldn't leave that on his plate. Okay. Um, but he's not as well versed in that as I am, just because that he hasn't really operated in that or function in that right. manner in the past. And then, of course, Gary would still be involved if it was a natural Absolutely. disaster or something like that. Um, yeah, quick question. I just want to keep, keep piggyback on that. Um, are you going to be accessible during your training if there are questions that we need your advice on or something, uh, via phone call or anything like that, or are you just gone for those that time period? For the most part, I'll be gone. I, I certainly can monitor email, um, but this program is a very rigorous program, and they have very rigorous, I mean, it's 7 a.m. to 5.35 p.m., Monday through Friday, period. And you're in classes, they're hour and 15-minute classes, one after the other, all day long. Um, so it's it's not like I'm going to have a lot of time to do that. I can certainly monitor emails and, and direct some things, but I've told my staff it's essentially like I'm gone. So Craig will be me. Um, and then if something, you know, extraordinary or, or odd comes up, certainly I can uh, look at my emails and things. Okay. Um, but I don't know the extent of how much free time I'll have yet. Okay. So, and what kind of crisis? I mean, like, what are you thinking? I mean, well, anything? Well, it's going through my head. Yeah. And any time that you have a head person and you have people mm -hmm. under the head person, it usually means that the head person um, is going to resolve any conflicts that mm -hmm. exist in any way in any part of the organization. So that's one. Mm -hmm. The second thing is they usually interact with their peers or whatever at other places. I don't know how necessary that is, um, meetings and such. And, I, and what was going through my head right before you asked me that question was, okay, what we could do is go into this without anybody because mm -hmm. we can always have somebody. Right. After the fact. Right. Then and that's. If it isn't working, we'll just yeah. get together then, and say, okay, this is the way it's going to work. Yeah. Or, or else right. I, I, that's, that was my thought, too. Yeah, if it isn't working, then you could designate somebody or, or bring somebody in. But I think, like Allie and Mike pointed out, bringing somebody in for just a few weeks mm -hmm. might not be the best. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think that might be counterproductive somebody from the outside. You're gonna end up with somebody from the outside on a permanent basis, but you'll be picking them versus just right. having them. Well, again. I wasn't actually going for that option anyway. My, yeah, my, yeah, but I, The yeah. thought process I had in my head is that it would be one, one of the staff that we have, but. And I'm sure I'll be in contact with Allie and with David and with with Brian, um, maybe more free. Now I have a lot of contact with Mike, right. mm -hmm. but I think I'd probably have more contact with those three and. Well, not with you because you're going to be gone. But <laughs> and even even Gary maybe more frequently than I normally would. I mean, if if I have questions mm -hmm. or if something comes up, I think um, there's what three council meetings. Hopefully, before we get someone in here, so that's kind of what we're looking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The two in January and the first one in Feb. Yeah. Ho yeah. Hopefully, I mean yeah. that's another thing. If this gets prolonged for right. lack of candidates, we might have to. But I think to Anne's consider. point, it's not just the council meetings; it's the daily operations Correct. that yeah. we want to make sure that they continue um, smoothly and mm -hmm. you all get along. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I would say you know I, I spent some time, in, as a number of people here have in different organizations. It's really a well-run cohesive group. I mean, they, they can 
turn it on when they get here and turn it off when they get home and they're not uh, afraid to work outside the time constraints of the 8 to 4.30 if they have to. They're, they all know when it's time to pitch and mm -hmm. do whatever they got to do. Just, so they're all really good at that. I have no, no qualms about that. Okay, and, and you and I talked about this too. Is there anyone who wants to do it? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I okay. I think the only conversation I've had with anybody on the staff has been with Brian, and we had, I think, one conversation about it. Okay. And I'll kind of go back to, I think I told this to a few people on the council, but I'll tell it publicly because it, it, it's it, there's nothing wrong with telling it publicly. So back in 2019 when we were hiring Allie's position, this city has not routinely done psychological evaluations for its management team. Um, we probably should have for a long time, but we haven't. Um, when I was at Eden Prairie, we did them routinely for middle manager positions and all. Um, <clears throat> I asked to do for that position and ended up being Allie as our hire. So I had her get a psych and I asked these guys, in fact, they could tell you, I asked them probably a year or two before we hired Allie, would you guys be interested in developmental psychs? Just, you know, to kind of figure out how you do things best and help us communicate better. So I had Gary, Brian, and David do it. I didn't include Paul because he's been psyched three times. Yes. When he got promoted to sergeant, promoted <laughs> lieutenant, promoted to chief, kind of figured it might be a waste of money to do his psych. But I have access to those that information. One of the questions on the you know, City's guys when they took them was I asked uh, Mark McAllister's uh, consulting psychologist, and her, her name is Norma DiLorenzo. I've worked with Norma way back to my Eden Prairie days. I said, find out if these guys have an, have an interest, any of them, in being city managers or city administrators someday. This is back in 2019. I had no idea when I was going to retire, none. Uh, I knew it would probably be in the next three to four years, five years, and it being less than that. But nonetheless, she told me they're all very happy doing what they do. They really like doing what they do. They don't, not, they, none of them really expressed any real interest in becoming me because my goal was a case, whether it's Brian or David or whoever, See, I'd be interested, I would help groom them and prepare them for that, but nobody really seemed to mention it to her. And so that's fine. They're all really good at what they do, like I said. So um, you're no better, you're no worse off by just leaving them in their positions and letting them work together. So that's my take on it. So. Yeah, the only challenge I could see is if someone under the scenarios where they really, I want to talk to the administrator. Sure. Like, like who... Is it just we don't have one right now, or is it right. we're going to feed it to the proper department, or if you're if, it's, if they're not already there? So that's <clears> the <throat> biggest thing I guess I could yeah, see by not appointing someone is because um, not that often. I got one call today. Somebody wanted to speak with the city attorney, and, I, and our front desk person, first time she's ever got that call, and she's been here over a year. Okay. She called and said, "Should I?" Pay? I said, "Just patch it through." And I answered the phone, and I didn't say my title. You, the city attorney, said, nope. And I'm the city minister. What can I do? I said, I'm not going to pay our city attorney to talk with you because we have to pay for that. So what do you got? And we resolved it. So, But, you know, some people think that's the best thing to do is to call the city administrator. And half the time, I right. just delegate that to feed it over to – I get a lot of them in the community development area. I feed it to David and Nick and – it's usually Nick that handles their issue. Realtors, whoever. They send it to me. Like, shoot for the top. <laughs> I don't have the answer normally. Well, I'm certainly willing to try it. I mean, well, staff will be the first ones to know if it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> they'd not be honest right with well. you. They'd say, yeah, we're having a lot more issues than we thought. So. I think you'd have to let us know. And yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, and certainly if there's some emails or phone calls that mm -hmm. you would like me to field, I'd be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, if they insist on speaking to the administrator and he's not here, and, and if you, no, nobody you else will do, or... you could say, well, you know, the other call option mayor. is call our mayor. So, I mean, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. So, I do that now. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, one other question um, Where will we be at with labor negotiations? <laughs> Lord knows. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I agree. Um, we have a session tomorrow, as you know, um, since you ran on the call last week as we were discussing the strategy for that session. I have no idea. This has been kind of a crazy labor negotiations. 
Brian's been on a bunch with me over the years. Allie's been on a few for this year, this past year. This is the goofiest one I think we've had. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So I couldn't tell you what the answer is to that. I'd love to say, hey, we'll be done tomorrow, but I don't know that. I think some of the things so we'll see. I'm asking for, <laughs> we're not... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as uh, the one that's pending right now, are there others coming up after two years? Two years. Okay. Yeah. Then we go to that. Just time. the one that's out there yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you'll be looking for that quality and whoever it is that's going to sit in this chair. Yeah. And you want somebody who has some negotiation experience, labor negotiation experience. Be, please be part of it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. we're we're the benefits of a three year contract, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. 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 I got two more years to go. So, John, any? You've answered my concern was emergency scenario, yeah. or if there were phone calls or emails you get on a regular basis that are more non-department related, and I don't know what those would be, but right. my comfort level is always often time when I've talked to Mike, it might be a more finance question or it might be a land management mm -hmm. question, and so I'm going to end up per Mike's direction, not that he's passing the buck, no. but go to the expert, so yeah. I end up, and, and I send more emails to, probably to Gary and to Brian than I send to Mike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know, I've always been that kind of administrator. I don't want to be the bottleneck. A lot of places, they, managers, administrators, they kind of like being there. They want to know exactly what's going on at every minute. And I know I'm going to hear from either one of you guys after you do a call to these people on staff, or they'll let me know. I'm going to find out. This is too small a place to, <laughs> for anything to keep me hidden. So, but um, I've said this to a number of council members. You know, if you send an email just to Brian, copy me. So at least I know he's going to handle it anyway. So at least I know you were asking the question. So, or it's Gary or David or whoever it might be. So, okay. Hey, I told. I think I told. Who did I tell today? Pam. Pam. Somebody. I said. Hey, you can always give me a call if you want, but I won't be on the payroll. <laughs> I have your personal you? number. <laughs> Everybody knows. I use my personal number. Call me if you want. He'll change his number. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> but you could if you really get felt like you had that. These guys are going to be the ones that answer the questions. Yeah. So I can certainly give them advice, but they don't have full listen I feel better that you said that, though. No, that's fine. If you really want to call me, you can. I prefer you don't, but because like these guys are very capable. But hey, if you really want to call me? Call me. All right. Okay. So we'll we'll go with um, whatever that is, option one or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So next is our sewer fund discussion. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council. So this is a follow up from our uh, October eighteenth. Council meeting or work session, one of the work session discussions that night. So, a couple of the main themes, I guess, at least that I um, got out of that last meeting was um, one, you know, what's an appropriate cash or fund balance in the fund, you know, at least, you know, an informal fund balance policy or at least a rationale for that. And um, hopefully, I presented one that seems uh, amenable to the council at least I think it makes sense as far as just looking at what I feel is is, is comfortable and safe to have in the in the fund knowing our um, expenditures annually in that fund and then um, secondly it was uh, what type of uh, items do we have in the, in the sewer fund um, as far as you know even just you know, emergency type I, not even emergency I guess we were just talking emergencies but more like you know things that are unplanned for or um, things coming down the pike so uh uh, Gary Peters helped, and that was um, on the last page of the packet item. There, um, a list of some things that have happened in the past few years, as well as looking ahead. So, um, I think yeah, Gary did a good job of, of recapping that, and wanted the council to see that there is some. Um, I think probably you know dual reasons. A with the uh, the city. Um, I, mean, I mean, the city's just. Uh, the growth, but but then there is also a lot of uh, old existing infrastructure out there. Whether it's you know a lot of the twenty some lift stations, etc. And you can see all the work we did in, in Minneapolis this year as far as spending, you know, <clears throat> five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand in total sewer improvements. You know, most of that in the Minneapolis area. So um, the two options I guess I, I put in the packet was um, to uh, you know try to do an incremental rate increase of about two dollars. 
per quarter each year. It's basically 2% because the rates are you know, $103 a quarter right now. And then so I wanted, and then I reflected that in the uh, attached statements where we'd end up with, um, as a projected cash balance a couple years out, and it ended up being about 410000 And then secondly was to leave the rate as is the next couple of years, and it, it dropped to about 350000 projected at the, at the end of 2023. So then I think in the memo there on page four, I gave a quick calculation as far as, um, I guess first I, I thought, you know, a, a good fund balance to have in the fund is about 40 to 50 percent of the uh, annual expenditures, which is operations and our annual debt payments is what it, like, to me would make the most sense because capital can fluctuate from year to year. So when you looked at basically our annual expenditures in the fund are just shy of 950,000. So if we, um, you know, would end up around 400,000 in the fund, that's about 43%, you know, 350 gets, you know, under 40%, 37% in the example I gave there. So to me, it would make sense to do an incremental increase. I guess we're only talking about 2022 for now, but to do the $2 now, for with our fee schedule adoption in December to, to raise it to $105 a quarter. And then obviously we can always look at it again for 2023. But to me, it makes more sense to do, I think we've talked about the water fund. That's why we've done the 4% a year since our water treatment plants went on mom, because I think we could have jumped it like 12% right away and had more money up front and then maybe held it flat later or, you know, did lower increases, but it made more sense to go, you know, four, 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 four for five years versus doing, 12, 8, or, you know, something like that. So to me, it's using the same philosophy here as to, to do small incremental rate adjustments versus pausing it. You know, we, we have paused in the in sewer fund for several years, but then, you know, pausing another year and then maybe going up four or five bucks next year because we did nothing this year. So that's what um, where I'm at, I guess, as far as what I'd recommend. This is just a curious question. Do we know how many people are on sewer, city sewer? Do you know how many units? Yeah, it's, it's, it's about like 2,350 or something like that. I was guessing 25. Okay, so 23. 23, 2400, 24, yeah. I mean, okay. yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, we keep adding, so right. it's about that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah, it's more than the water. It's more than the water. But, but, more than water. but less than, obviously, everyone gets billed the, the surface water and right. the recycling, you know, for yeah. all parcels. But, yeah, it's, yeah, the water's. More like two thousand or whatever, give or take. The water is about seventeen, seventeen fifty. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's eighteen hundred. Yeah, I'm gonna say eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Between seventeen and eighteen. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Questions. Anne. <laughs> um, that last page, the listing of the sewer maintenance. Okay. I'm gonna assume that 2019, 2020, 2021, um, that's all. That's all been covered and been covered within the fund. There's nothing hanging out. The only thing we probably haven't paid for yet is I don't think we've been billed for those SCADA upgrades. Gary, correct? Correct. It's in the process of being done now. And I think we're we're having that between the sewer and the water, right? Correct. So it's so I guess that one sixty eight divided by two, but it's still eighty four thousand dollars or whatever. So, so. And so the upcoming and that's part of the upcoming project needs. Well, I guess yeah, we haven't. Um, the skate upgrades was actually um, it's it's we we what do you call it just approved that in 2021 to get all caught up there, but we haven't paid for it yet. I guess so. It's not this is not reflected in the fund yet because we haven't paid for it yet. It's not okay. the two dollar increase. Yep, that's going to increase the fund enough to cover those things. Yeah, with spending down some of the fund balance on hand, correct? Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we didn't have some of that money on hand, it, it wouldn't. I mean, we'd be. You know, you can see where we've dropped this year. We went from 1.8 million to a little over a million to 700,000 to 400,000. So, I mean, the reason I more went two is because three last time wasn't real looked at real happily, I guess, or <laughs> real positively, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. It, wasn't, it wasn't. That's why I'm bringing it up. So, it, it wasn't that it wasn't happily. It was that I asked you for a firmer definition of why it was two, three, or four. Okay. Yep. You've given a very good explanation, except now I'm a little bit confused. Because now, I, and I think from what you just said, you really went through. That would be better because obviously <laughs> at some point you got to, just like in the general fund, at some point you can't rely on fund balance. you got right. to get back to break so even. Really so really should be three. That, I would, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. See, it puts a hold in my little 
And I, I don't know that it's going to make a huge difference if we do two dollars or three dollars. Well, I mean, in terms of people helps. being, you know, paying it. I don't think we'll get a lot more calls for three yeah. versus two. Is that what you're basically saying? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, no, if you're going to say that, then we're going to make it three. Well, I'm just asking, you know, if I, mean, I think, I think again, the, my explanation was strictly where were you coming from so that there was a solid foundation that I can even explain that uh, about why we're doing an increase. And you've done a very good job of, of giving us that. But when I saw the two instead of the three, I had a funny feeling that maybe two wasn't enough. And when I went through the numbers, it didn't look like two was enough. I would agree with that. Okay. I'd, I'd say just two is better than zero, then so really three is better be three. than two. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. So I think when you just went through the last number of years going from 1.7 to 1 to 700,000 to 400,000, to me that maybe strengthens your argument to go to 3 versus yes. 2. Well, one of the I mean, things... Was, yeah. We did it on purpose, correct? Right. I mean, we spent on 1.7 million. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. Knowing we had some money built up. Right. Right. So. But what I want to make sure is that we the fee that we charge is enough to cover our general ongoing operational expenses plus some maintenance. But the big CIP projects then, if we add a little, have a little bit of extra wiggle room in there, but then that's where you use your fund balance, maybe. Basically, yeah, is, is how it's structured right now. Yeah, but if we can at least break even on the operations and we're right. sitting at about a million bucks, that's where we have, we have a couple hundred thousand dollar expenditure, which we pretty much... Right. Do almost each year based on what you know Gary's projected out. That's basically coming out of the fund balance, the capital mm -hmm. portion. But eventually, if you if your fund balance continues to creep downward, are we going to need to do you know like a twenty dollar increase? I don't want to get to that point. Well, you'd have to either do that, or you, or, which you know, we don't want to get to that point, or you you, you maybe issue a, a debt if the interest rates are still low. You know, we do have that one. Your debt payment um, back to some, when we did some projects back in 2012, and the, and the fund balance was low. We we bond. It was you know like this year would have been a, a good candidate for if our fund balance would have been low. You know we're doing you know eight hundred thousand dollars improvements. Maybe you you, you break, build that into a bond with you know maybe a road project or something or whatever. So um, or something you know or whatever. Or you bond them as separate ones, but you just do it at the same time. Or Instead of drawing on cash. Yeah, yeah. So if interest rates are going up, why don't we do that now? I don't know if it would be, well, it's it's the only bad. thing would be whether it be hard to justify issuing debt when you've got available money in the right. fund. Right, yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah, I mean, the interest okay. rates are still good now, so if the council, you know, does have, I mean, if there's projects that we would ever make that analysis to, to bond for, it might just be a hard sell right, in this situation mm -hmm. with still having a million bucks in the fund. Yeah, I, I agree. Who analyzes all of that? Because if we actually, we're fairly sure that, that the uh, interest rates are going to go up. Well, I mean, they've stayed low for a long time. I guess I don't know how soon they're going to go back up. Okay. I mean, from what I'm hearing is that you're, they're going to probably stay low for... Another year? Yeah. Yep, yep. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right. And we'll have to bond for the um, the water project. So what Maybe. we could do is if something, we'll, we'll uh, if something big in the sewer department is needed for CIP, we could look and see, well, do we want to roll it together? But I also want to keep an eye on um, the federal dollars because um, I'm wondering if there's a water infrastructure, more more water infrastructure funding coming. So we'll have oh, to keep an eye on that. Oh, the new or some of the infrastructure yeah. bill at yeah. the federal mm -hmm. level. Or, right. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see. I don't know how much Minnesota's getting and how that will be divided up, but uh, we may be able to get some more of those dollars as well. I know the, the broadband, we're, we're going to be looking at that, too. So but we'll just keep an eye on that. Okay, so with that in mind, because that it was just passed today, that bill. So um, with that in mind, then $2 for this year is probably enough. I'm fine with two or three, I guess. I don't have the <laughs> council decide that. <laughs> All right. I guess I originally had recommended three, and I went down to two. So I guess, uh, and now, but it's you know, any decisions up to the I, council I think as far as... Two would be good. It's if fine, we have yeah. a large item, again, then we have to decide. You have to say to yourself, okay, if we have a large item, let's say it's a five or $600,000 item, then we may be looking at bonding. Are you interested in doing that? And if you want to do three, 
it's only going to make, I think we decided, it's only going to make about a $20,000 no, difference. Yeah, yeah. So, make, so we not, would still big, probably right. be bonding or, right. or sure. potentially right. bonding part of it. Right. So maybe two is fine for this year, and then next year we take a look, and maybe next year we want to do three. Um, I think the, what, what really I think is good is what it shows us here is this 40 to 50% fund balance. That's what I'm, uh, I think we need to kind of keep within those boundaries. And then we have, um, we can substantiate why we're increasing it because we say, well, you know, we want to stay within this, this boundary between 40 and 50, and this gets us to the 47 or whatever it was, 43. 43. Like, but we really don't want to go much lower than that, so next year we take another look at it. Okay. So I think two is good. Okay. And then we understand what the other implications might be. Gary, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I just, the only thing I would add is we're putting a lot of money into it up front here now in the last couple of years here. Our infrastructure is getting old, but now with this new, the new pumps and the new piping and the lift stations and having crew that is very capable of doing our in-house servicing, we will get more life out of this. Yes, we're spending a lot of money now on infrastructure, but with the better maintenance plans and stuff coming through, we can cycle through now and we'll start having a lot better record keeping and mm -hmm. know what's coming down the pipe a lot better than what we have not been now. So Right, and I think a long range CIP plan might be a good idea too. So we can see that and, and then determine um, how much more we so let's say operating expenses are nine hundred fifty thousand a year. We want to make sure we we levy or we we bill a million a year so that we put that fifty thousand aside for future CIP or whatever. So again, we'll look at a long range financial plan for that too. Okay. So yeah, no, I think that's good. And then maybe just to yeah back it up globally as far as so that be the. Uh, the two dollars a quarter on the sewer. I think last time we talked about a dollar for the recycling fund, mm -hmm. and then nothing for the storm surface water. And then, mm -hmm. I guess the plan. I think when we looked at the um, the water one was the first one we looked at was to just do the the four percent across the board for now. But early next, there'll probably be some. There will be some analysis on the tiers and stuff as part of the water discussions right. and stuff going right. forward. Whether. It's and we a, can change that. Yeah, and it, yeah, you can always end, uh, yeah. amend the fee schedule right. Um, right. early in 2022 if we want to do something with the top two, three, or right. top, I guess there's top two tiers. We have three tiers. Or whatever, right. so. so let me ask a question since that will probably have to be studied, let's say, January, February kind of time frame. Who's going to be in charge of that? Who is going to be doing those tier because eventually we're going to bring it back, and if we don't have somebody on board until, mm -hmm. let's say, March, I just want to make sure we know who's going to be the lead or the point person to put those tiers. Is that you? You're going to look into the raids? Probably, yes. Okay. I think that okay. makes sense. Yeah. You and well. Gary and <coughs> Allie will kind of work on that together? Yeah, I'll probably still tap Don. I was going to say Don. Don. <laughs> Don. <laughs> just based Brian on, and Don. Okay. You know, everyone's having, having that. Everyone's All right, having I just want to make so. sure that because we want to have that discussion, <laughs> yeah. and we probably want to have it, I would probably I think I have it for first, January. Well, Good. even January, February kind of thing. I want to make sure that. Probably January. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. With that, um, any other? So uh, just kind of, okay, circling back to again with the um, environmental fund, we I do want to talk about that maybe in January as to what we want to do with those dollars and how we can um, spend them and, um, I definitely, if there's any trees or bushes, landscaping in our parks, can we use it for that? I, I, I'd like to, you know, save our park fund dollars for other things. Um, and then, is there anything in the water from Pioneer Sarah coming down the pike pretty soon? Because we could use those. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So when are they doing um, whale tail? Do you know? been pushed back. Okay. It was obvious as most of us are here aware it's it was probably in twenty twenty, then it was twenty twenty one. Now it's not even on the radar listed. So why is that? Uh some of the other Sentinel likes, uh Rebecca okay. Independence have had 
they got big grant money for independence for okay. studies and the removal of curly leaf what, whatever mm -hmm. so Could it just funny. keeps getting pushed back okay. and three river parks is not making it a priority because they would be the ones that would push it okay um, they don't look at it as being because it's fed by little long lake a stream from there predominantly which is a very clear right they're not looking at it getting further contamination there's not a lot of agricultural Agriculture. around so it's not getting worse mm -hmm. okay. so it's just kind of been put on the back burner <clears throat> I'm talking about an alum treatment for a yeah, hotel. They've yeah. talked about that for a number of years, um, particularly the, would it be the north, I'm not sure, the bay on this end. Um, no, the south is the more, yeah. the deeper. Right. Yeah. And so an alum treatment um, gives you better water quality, water clarity. So just. The other you. thing is it doesn't have, amazingly for a lake like that, it doesn't have a lot of uh, rough fish which yeah. go down and feed in the bottom and, right, stir, and stir it all it up. up. So, mm -hmm. it, and again, I think part of that is because it's fed by very clear stream. Okay. So yeah, there's nothing pending at Minatrista that's even out here where you can touch okay. it. Because I was thinking if, if it was, you know, then yeah. the environmental fund I would think could be used for our, our portion of that, you know, so. But um, yeah, if there's other things okay. that come up, and I'm thinking if do we want to, you know, think about planting some trees and, and boulevards and, um, you know, so just think about it. So, all right. Mayor, do you want me to do the broadband update since we have time? Or would you rather have it under the staff? Can, we, can we add that <clears throat> to the, can we? Or it's no? not a special meeting, so you probably can. You probably well, we could just leave. I was just thinking if we had time. Yeah. But. Well, if we can add it, that's fine. If we can legally add it, Why you I, let me ask you this: Is the council okay with adding um, a broadband <laughs> update to this agenda? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, All those in favor, signify aye. with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes for all. So <laughs> sorry, I didn't realize um, we'd be done. Sorry. Okay. So yes, we have some time here. Um, so just a quick update: um, Minnesota is set to receive a minimum of a hundred million dollars from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Uh, once the federal government establishes a process for awarding the funds to the state, the state will have to do so for awarding funds to um, local entities. So right now we're playing a waiting game uh, for instructions from the state on how to obtain these funds. So I'll keep you guys updated on those funds. And last week I spoke with a representative from um, the Minnesota Office of Broadband and Development where we get our deed fund through our award through regarding the 2022 deed grant project. And due to delays at the federal level, the state is hoping to open the application window in the first quarter of 2022. So, so we first. won't know until first quarter of 22. Okay. Yeah, at least the application window. Okay. Hoping by summer we can have the application okay. in, in review. Oh, you're saying applications. Yeah. The application mm -hmm. window. I think this year okay. was September through the end of the year. Yeah, right. it was four so months, it's a, and they're saying first quarter, so it's three months, okay. but it's yeah. four months late. Okay. And it's yeah. at the federal level, so I think once they can establish a process for the state, then it'll go quick, but we're mm -hmm. still waiting. I, mean, I think that bill just got passed, so. Yeah. Which is, Hopefully it's quick. Well, yeah, well then I'm just saying that that's probably why like the state has not seen anything because they didn't pass right. anything in Washington. I think that's what they're waiting for. And uh -huh. I think it's $70 okay. million. For the for the, the state board. fund, Correct. so the state. I thought it was sixty. Seventy. Seventy. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's a buy. That's two years, so. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So they do thirty-five each, and that's for a broadband expansion, right? The border so, to border grant. Border yes. to border grant. So here's the thing with the uh, federal dollars, there there's going to be numerous different categories, so it's not all going to be for a broadband expansion or or mm -hmm. you know like the deed grant is. So I don't know how much they're going to do. I don't know how it's all going to play out, how much is going to be designated for um, expanding it to unserved and underserved areas. There's also talk about um, how much is going to be going to outstate to communities, you know. So we have to, that's the other thing is I think we should um, maybe even send another letter to our representatives saying when this money comes in, you need to keep us in mind. 
because I, I message them. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. um, I want to keep us on their radar screen because even though we're in the metro area, we have many areas that are unserved and underserved. We are no different than outstate. Mm -hmm. And I want to make that clear that they can't just say fifty million is going to go to outstate and you know five million to this whole area. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to make sure that we don't get lost in the shuffle. So right. yep. just so you know that. And, and um, Allie's been in touch with a number of different people, and so she'll keep us posted. Yeah. Good. We're kind so. of on a waiting game right now. So. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. it. That's it. Wow. So at, is it at 5.30 or at 5.45 that we're going to have cake and coffee? It will for be this? at 6. 6.30. 6.30. Yeah. Okay. So we or about, they'll come. They'll come. Yeah. I think. Okay. Float in. Yeah. All right. That's it. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Pam. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Anne. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 4-0.